What's up guys, K plays here. Time until we get more on Monster Hunter Wilds is still going way too slow. We're all probably itching for some new info, but I don't think I'm speaking from too much of a bias when I say that suspense is probably hitting us hunting horn users the hardest. Why? Well, because we kind of have no clue how our weapon is going to function in the future. Where most other weapon users are just wondering what new moves and mechanics they'll get added in, we don't even know which version of hunting horn they'll be adding onto in the first place. It's all because of that redesign that came out of the blue in Rise. Weapons usually don't get messed with multiple times in a generation like that, much less that extensively, and when they do, it tends to stick. For example, every moveset got revised between 2nd and 3rd gen, and those new versions became the new baseline every weapon uses to this day. You really don't see anybody longing for the days where things were more clunky, super simple, and less streamlined. More recently, Bo's moveset got totally revised in World, and from what I see, that went over relatively well. So well, in fact, that Rise built from that new baseline so it looks like it's here to stay. That's exactly what makes Hunting Horn's situation so odd. We got a redesign in Rise literally right after getting a pretty significant mechanical overhaul in World, and the reception wasn't nearly as positive as it usually is in these situations. For every player that loves the new mechanics, there's a player with mixed opinions about the changes and another that absolutely hates them. That probably puts the devs over at Capcom working on Wilds Hunting Horn in a bit of a bind. Who do they cater to? The new and existing fans that love the makeover? The disappointed older fans that'd rather have a return to the old version? Maybe they'll try to please both and create something that's a fusion of both. Personally, I'd be happiest with that third option, because after I weigh what we have here, my preference over which we should see it in Wilds is pretty much... Both. 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 Both is good. I see both sides of the argument. I get why some players are unhappy with the changes, and also what others like about them. Both versions are good in their own ways, and we'd be losing out if Capcom decides to toss either out in favor of the other. The catch is going about reaching that middle ground in a way that actually makes sense. I've been trying to think of how a best of both world version could function myself, and the more I do, the more I realize it's not quite as easy as just, say, taking the song mechanics of one and slapping them onto the moveset of the other. Rise and World Hunting Horn are still similar in some ways, but very, very different in others, so there's a risk of certain things clashing if you combine them just any old way. Since we'll be in the dark on how they'll be handling things in the official game, I thought it'd be fun to pass the time by trying to build the Hunting Horn I'd like to see and share it with all of you. I'd originally planned to do this all in one video, but I've had so much to say on just the intro to the topic alone that I think it'd be best to break it up into a series of videos instead. I feel like the best way to split this up would be to tackle the basic components one by one. The regular moveset, the song mechanics and recital moveset, and its identity in the game and weapon roster. Basically, what makes Hunting Horn Hunting Horn. Before we get into the real details though, we need to look at the versions we currently have to work with. As we break those down, we'll see the pros and cons of each and how they would complement each other in our hypothetical third version. World gave us something I like to call the best of the old school version of the Hunting Horn, combining everything we've seen before with some nice new mechanics to tie it all together. Other than the ability to hilt stab after moves as a note shortcut, we have the same classic moves that we've been building on since Portable 3rd. Unlike a lot of other weapons, Hunting Horn is free to do almost any move in any order, which really helps with stringing the other notes and cracking monster skulls at the same time in the most efficient way possible. World added some nice extra complexity to the equation when you factor in all the tweaks of the song mechanics. The biggest by far was the song cue, which stored the last three note combos you put together. These can either be saved for later use, stacked to get multiple buffs at a time per recital, or used sort of like ammo for recital attacks, which became more damaging with the new sound waves added to them. Increased mobility during recitals and the ability to roll cancel really helped when it came to mixing songs into combat. The final product was a weapon that looked deceptively simple on the outside, but had a lot of technical depth to the gameplay when you really got into it. The word methodical comes up a lot when people describe world hunting horn, and I can't agree more. When you get into your groove, pun fully intended, hunts become a dance of throwing out a swing or two between dodging monster attacks, all while managing your song cue and looking for the perfect moment to land a hefty recital encore combo. I spawned through yet another tool into our kit with the echo attack, a rapid hitting spin that made room for elemental hunting horn to compete with our usual raw damage builds. It also gave us echo note songs, which could either be a higher damage sound burst or buffing clouds that you could leave for other players to walk through. With two more songs added to every horn, song lists grew up to a max of a whopping 10 songs. But fortunately World had already added on-screen song lists you could use as a cheat sheet, so memorizing combos became a thing of the past. The on-screen song list also doubles as a handy way to keep track of which buffs you have active. They really thought of it all. It's funny just how much Hunting Horn got between the base game and the expansion, because looking at the weapon trailer receptions back then, people were kinda underwhelmed. Not much of the deeper aspects really came through with what we were shown, just a couple of haphazard swings and the general message of, hey, this weapon is the support class of the game. Do you hear that? The, the, the support class. Online only. Part of that is mostly due to the fact that most of Hunting Horn's style comes out when you see it used by an experienced player rather than it being an inherently flashy weapon. But you also have to consider that it's a mechanics heavy weapon as well. It's a bit hard to show everything under the surface in just a 30 second to a minute trailer format. 
which is why Rise came as such a surprise, because that trailer came out swinging. If you weren't flipping out over it, you were utterly speechless. I mean, just look at a few of the reactions you can find on YouTube. Oh my god. Oh, the moves! Yo! The Brave Recital is bad. What the hell is that? And then you can transition. Oh! No! What? 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 Bro! Okay, we got an area there. What the hell is that? Was <laughs> 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 it just doing there? What the hell? Oh, <laughs> what? Okay, I know that's the normal performance from the old one. Oh my! Whoa! Wait! 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 Did he cancel that? Wait! No more holding back! No more holding back! No more holding back! They say first impressions are everything, and that was certainly spot on back then. This new hunting warden wasn't just getting the usual new move or two, some new note shortcut or whatever. It was getting a total makeover. Fast, flashy, it practically looked like an entirely new weapon. Fish Gen's track record was looking pretty good so far. And with this, it was finally gonna be our time to shine. Or at least that's what it looked like at first. Well, to be fair, by the time we got the most recent weapon usage rates for Sunbreak, we did triple our numbers from Iceborne. But that's hardly the popularity boost we were initially expecting. Before that, it was the third most used weapon in the demo, and ninth a few months after the full game released. So what happened to take us all the way down to third from the bottom of where we are now? Well, once we got the demo in our hands, we found out that the redesign went a lot deeper than we thought. The new moveset was definitely fast and flashy. Moves flow together a lot smoother, allowing for a more combo-heavy playstyle shift. Magnificent Trio, that crazy super combo from the trailer, was able to play all your songs in one go once you stocked one of each note. On top of that, we got a new meter that, when filled by the landing attacks, allowed you to play Infernal Melody using the old Echo Attack animation. That song gives you a short damage boost built into every hunting horn, so even if your song list didn't have attack up, you still had a way to buff yourself and the team. It would probably be all well and good with most players if that was all the changes, but we know now that that wasn't the case. See, we were probably all assuming that they'd just be adding this fresh coat of paint onto the more robust sound mechanics that they'd just given us a world in Iceborne. But in an effort to make Hunting Warren appeal to more players, a lot of things were streamlined and simplified for more ease of use. Set combo paths were added for the first time, so while we could breakdance on monsters now, we couldn't do it in whatever order we wanted to anymore. Song mechanics went through a much more drastic change. Song lists were reduced to a max of 3 plus self-improvement across the board so there'd be less to keep track of, and the total number of possible songs in the game was reduced as well. On top of that, the note combos were also removed. Instead, each of your songs were attached to one note, and you'd activate them in two new song playing methods. Performance mode, which activates songs instantly without even using a recital once you match two of the same note, and echo mode, which uses the recital to play songs but only requires one note to cue them instead of the usual two to four. Both methods activate buffs most fashionable by ditching the old dancing in place recital animation, but this also came with the loss of all the old recital attacks, including encores, because the songs no longer had multiple levels for them. In fact, because of this, they also decided to reduce the effectiveness of a few songs for balancing reasons. All of that had the unfortunate side effect of making it so that the expanded moveset didn't have as much of a use case for each attack as the older, simpler one did, aside from dealing damage and looking cool, of course. No no combos meant less reason to really mix up your attacking flow, which was odd because that's exactly what this new moveset seems to be built for. Hunting Horn gameplay shifted to an all-out offensive style, with song upheap becoming an almost automatic function rather than something you had to focus on and intentionally manage. Even if you had no idea what you were doing, chances are you could probably still just hit buttons and have your songs up for most of, if not all, of a fight. Sunbreak doubled down on this with the most notable addition being Silkbind Shockwave, a Silkbind attack that rewarded frequent attacking with time-delayed sound bursts for even more damage. Noticing a pattern here? Now, for some people, this actually worked out for the better. More eye-catchingly stylish moves and hyper of nature, paired with the more approachable mechanics, made Hunting Horn into a total package for them to finally start using. For those of us that were already playing it though, the reception was a lot more mixed. We didn't really need the weapon to get easier to use, and when all the new things came at the cost of mechanics a lot of existing Hunting Horn players really enjoyed about the weapon, it made it harder to appreciate those new things. Like for example, what use is a neutral draw to avoid messing up note combos when note combos don't exist? Should this usually medium speed weapon suddenly be filling the screen with damage numbers rapid fire, or is that sudden shift too jarring? Where the hype across the board used to be, 
We started seeing claims that this new version wasn't Hunting Horn anymore, it's too brain dead and butt mashy, it may as well be blunt dual blades, so on and so on. Now, do I personally agree with all these opinions? Well, not entirely, but at the same time I do see where some of them are coming from, and why new Hunting Horn lost old fans at the same time it was getting new ones. I find it really unfortunate because I do see some good in the new version and I have a ton of fun using it. I mean, come on. Even those of you that absolutely hate it can't really sit there and say that this thing doesn't look cool as all hell. And it's not even just the visuals, there are some good features from a functional standpoint in there too. The neutral draw is a really good idea that Punting Horn probably should have had for ages, even if we don't actually make much use of it in the current version. Faster song playing made healing songs and other instant use effects actually practical for the first time ever, which came in handy when Sunbreak introduced a bunch of strong seals that constantly drain your health. No need for those usual wide range potion spamming shenanigans to keep teammates and yourself alive when you heal with literally every button press while you're on the full offensive. That got even more effective when paired with Be The Resonance, which had the bonus effect of, for the first and only time in the entire series, allowing every hunting horn to have access to the always important attack up song. This and Infernal Melody were huge for weapon choice variety because you could pretty much just use whatever regardless of the song list. Speaking of variety, while song lists were smaller, no longer being tied to note color combos meant that we could potentially see any combination of songs instead of always having the same 15 pre-selected groups. There are more positives here and there, but unfortunately they weren't always able to be appreciated with everything else they came with. I really think the problem is that they just did too much all at once. I wouldn't be surprised if Rise Hunting Horn was born when the devs had a contest to decide who could come up with a new idea for Hunting Horn and surprise, everybody won. Just slap it all in there. There are individual ideas that might have been solid on their own, but altogether, they don't exactly make for the most cohesive final result. To set aside some of the black and white traumatics you usually see on this topic, because I already hear that crowd in the back that goes, BOO! YOU STINK! Anytime anyone tries to point out anything good in Rise Hunting Horn, it's more of a departure from the original than the outright improvement, or downgrade, that people are talking about. And the difference is either finally mesh with some or with too much for others. I'm all for bringing in fresh new ideas and new fans of my favorite weapon, but doing it in a way that alienates some of the current ones probably wasn't the best play. So what exactly do we need to take from World, Iceborne, Rise, and Sunbreak to get the best of both worlds in Hunting Horn after 5th Gen's bumpy ride? Well, I think that question is pretty easy to answer, but hard to actually do in a way that make everyone happy. There seems to be a general consensus that something as close as possible to World Song mechanics are the way to go. With my past Hunting Horn experience making those pretty much second nature, I'd be fine with that. But at the same time, we did see that Simpler made for a positive change for some players. Now that they've gotten a version of Hunting Horn they enjoy, I wouldn't want to alienate them any more than I would want to ignore the longtime users. I'm sure that even the best of us can remember being frustrated with memorizing no combos or getting out a song without being trampled by a monster. No, playing Hunting Horn isn't rocket science, but I think it's safe to say that it's not one of the easiest to pick up and master either. We don't want to cater to one group at the expense of another. That'd just be making Rise's mistakes but in reverse. A mechanic with just as much depth as before, but with a few streamlining features in place to make things easier should be doable. This is most likely what they had in mind with the redesign before things went overboard, by a lot, but there's definitely a more reasonable middle ground that can make everyone happy. As far as the moves go, I see where people miss the weight behind each swing because it's been a heavy weapon since the second generation, but Rise doesn't exactly make the weapon as light as a feather either. The multi-hitting attacks still use the weight of the horn to carry it through its movements, it's just doing it with a little more flair. Pair that with all the added sound bursts and that gives the illusion of a lot more speed than what's actually there. Might still be jarring for some either way, but it's worth remembering that the portable team games tend to feel a lot more fast paced. Get it into a main team game with more gravity to it, like Wilds will be, and the feel of the mood set will be a lot more fitting. At the same time though, I'm sure we'd all prefer to have new moves actually adding to the move set rather than replacing chunks of it. We're going to aim to lose as little of the classics as possible while squeezing in the best of the new stuff, and adding in a few ideas of my own too. What's most important though is that no matter what we do, the result still needs to feel like Hunting Horn. There is some wiggle room to play around with when it comes to this, but the further you stray away from the key components, the more you risk losing sight of the original design. Some things are just too integral to a weapon's identity to phase out in the name of innovating. If we're lucky, Capcom will be operating on the same logic when they're building Wild Hunting Horn, rather than just doubling down on Rise's redesign or scrapping it entirely due to the backlash in favor of the world's version. Hopefully, Hunting Horn will be MIA for most of the official news cycle like it was in Rise, so we'll be able to see it right away. But until that reveal comes around, let's have a little fun speculating on what we might see. In the next part after this, we'll be diving into building a hypothetical future moveset that combines the playstyles of both 5th gen versions, so stay tuned for that. Let me know what you guys are hoping for in the comments too, and whether or not you'd like it if my version ended up being in the next game. Feedback is always appreciated. I think it'll be interesting to compare our wishlist to the real deal when it's finally shown. Until then though, this has been another K-Plays and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.